Cultist Simulator is Play Digital's newest entry on Nintendo Switch. Originally released on PC to raving reviews and then brought over to mobile, it's now the Switch's turn to get a crack at this narrative roguelike card game that's something you've probably never seen before. While a lot of the DNA and UI take inspiration from the mobile offering, there are some new touches specifically for the Switch that attempt to simplify what's going on just a little bit. But in all honesty, it's easier said than done. There's little hand holding in this game and it's not shy about thrusting you directly into a run. While engaging with the UI is pretty straightforward, the complexity is all underneath. Set in the 1920s, the story is kind of what you want it to be. In fact, that's the driving factor. The decisions that you make shape your character's life. Starting out, you place cards in a predestined area in a simple task like managing your health, money, and contentment while keeping your physical and mental stresses in a manageable state. Placing a card will trigger a timer and sometimes the option to place subsequent cards for an added effect. What those two combinations result in is the key driver for the experience. Time is constantly in motion, so it's best to get acquainted with the pause button if you actually want to read what each of the cards is doing at any one time. Everything about this game encourages experimentation and trial and error going in, meaning someone can open up a diverse set of options, but if you don't spark up that conversation, you can completely miss something that could have changed your run, or the game can simply throw it this easier way and have you trying to find a way to cure it with little to no avail. Each of the played cards tells an overarching story. While there's a moment-to-moment -moment instances where you need certain cards and traits to keep going forward, like health or money, there's an overall tale woven based on the decisions that you make and what the game decides to give back. Combining action cards and reasoning won't always net the same results. The game is always throwing a twist into your intentions. Circumstances are also a factor. New options and cards with limited timers may be given, that depending on what you have available at the time, could provide you with one of those aforementioned twists to the story. It's undoubtable that there's fun in figuring out the systems, and the vagueness of it all can be a lot to take in. And like I mentioned before, pausing the game is your best friend. Missing one timer and whatever cards were given at that time could have shaped things a certain way, and that's what triggers replayability, the constant nagging thought of what if. The Switch version includes the first three DLCs, The Dancer, Priest, and Ghoul while the Exile is launching alongside the game is being sold separately. The standalone DLC adds more cards and even a brand new mode. It's also worth mentioning that the touch controls are excellent and I had no problem reading the text on the Switch Lite. Cultist Simulator is a game with so many mutations and variations that can take place in just one specific run that trying to make sense of it all after just about a dozen hours or so is doing it a disservice but you can't help to sit back and feel frustrated at not the game for cheating you or you dying, but because you didn't know or were never hinted at something that could have been avoided. I never fault a game for complexity or difficulty, but there's always a threshold when it's deliberate, and this game is that in a nutshell. Nintendo's Fear Gives Cultist Simulator on Switch a 7 out of 10. If you're new to my channel, be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya!